So after we recognize cues, we are asked to analyze those cues or figure out what could they mean. And so a really common way that the NCLEX loves to do this is they love to ask you to distinguish between chronic venous problems and arterial problems. And so in this case, we've got a client with chronic venous insufficiency. Which of these findings is going to support that diagnosis? And again, they love to make sure you know arterial versus venous. So let's do a quick review. All right, so in peripheral artery disease, it, well, I'll ask this. If you guys had to choose one, neither of them are good, but if you had to choose whether you had peripheral artery disease or chronic venous insufficiency, which one's worse, so to speak? I hope you guys all get this right. But between the two, I think I would personally... <laughs> I would personally uh, prefer to have venous insufficiency because with peripheral artery disease, you have a lack of blood flow. You don't have enough blood getting to the distal extremity. And so in peripheral artery disease, you've got this atherosclerosis, also from smoking, ketosis, and that's going to narrow the arteries and limit the blood flow down to the distal leg. So you're going to have these findings of arterial insufficiency. And so basically, we've got, that's where your six Ps come in. You have a pale extremity with weak pulses. Um, it's got uh, pallor pain. They're going to cramp when they walk because it uses up all the blood in the leg. Good. Whereas in chronic venous insufficiency, we've got valves that don't let the blood return smoothly and it starts to pool in the lower extremities. And so that is going to cause signs of fluid retention. So you're going to have swelling, heaviness. When you do get ulcers, they're going to be higher up on the leg versus in peripheral artery disease, the problem is going to be worse distally on the leg. So in artery disease, you've got ulcers on the very like end of the foot, the toes, and in chronic venous insufficiency, they're typically higher up on the calf or the shin, right? So, all right, let's consider absent pedal pulse. Let me know, you guys, is that an arterial finding or a venous finding? Is that a problem related to PAD or chronic venous insufficiency? And I see you guys all kind of like one and four, so this is something, this is something that you guys might struggle with. All right, so if you've got an absent pedal pulse, that means, yes, Florabelle, again, you're right. We are not getting enough pulsatile blood flow to the foot, and so we're not feeling a pedal pulse. So that is not consistent with chronic venous insufficiency, so it's not this one. Then intermittent leg cramping with exercise. Is that an arterial or a venous problem? So this could happen with either if they're severe enough, but really, intermittent leg cramping with exercise is called intermittent claudication. And that's where the patient's walking around, their calf muscle uses up all the blood that's already there, and then it runs out because we can't get enough blood fast enough to that extremity and it starts to cramp. So that is also an arterial sign, good. Then ulcers on the toes with well-defined edges. Yes, you guys are right. Again, that is an arterial problem. We are not getting enough blood flow to the foot. And so down here on the toes is where you have arterial ulcers versus higher up on the leg with venous ulcers. Good. So this is also an arterial problem. And the last one then is what we're left with, which is brown discoloration to the lower extremities. And have you guys ever seen this before? It's something uh, called hemoceterin deposits. And I like to think of this like the leg is rusting, kind of, right? Because we've got this blood just pooling down here. It's stagnating here. And what's in blood but iron, right? And so we have iron that actually leaks out of the vessels into the skin and kind of sits there and oxidizes and discolors just like rust would on something that sits around. And so um, that is going to be typical of chronic venous insufficiency. Very well done. And again, only about 50% of our users got this correct. So if you guys answered this correct, you guys are ahead of the curve. Well done.